The Canon EOS R7 is the top APS-C camera in the world. At $14.99 for the body, it can take 32 megapixel photos up to 15 frames per second and 4K video up to 60 frames per second. We had the opportunity to dive with this amazing camera in really harsh conditions in the Pacific Northwest over the last month, and this is what we got. Hey guys, this is Nirpom with the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now, I'm excited to introduce to you guys the Canon EOS R7. It's Canon's top APS-C mirrorless camera uh, on the market. It just came out with the Canon EOS R10. I did a review on the R10 a few weeks back, and now it's time to review the R7. So before I get into the review, uh, let's just talk real quick about what makes the R7 different from the R10. Uh, as you guys might know, an APS-C sensor is a great option for those looking for a budget option with professional image quality. The crop on these cameras is 1.5 times a full frame sensor, uh, but that is totally good when it comes to image quality. You still get awesome dynamic range, good low light performance, and it's very hard for most people to tell the difference between an APS-C and a full frame camera like the Canon R5. Now, I was really excited about the R10 because it priced in at under $1,000 for the body. The R7 is more than $1,000 for the body at $1,499, so it is a little bit more in that higher end price point uh, for an APS-C camera, but it does an awesome job and it's just packed full of features. So if it's between the R10 and the R7, it's actually a pretty tough call for me. The R7 really excels over the R10 when it comes to resolution. It has 32 megapixels versus 24 megapixels on the R10. It has built-in in-body image stabilization, which helps you shoot at lower shutter speeds without getting motion blur. And it also is better for video. That's up to seven stops of correction, so it's a really impressive IBIS system. The camera has a larger buffer. It has a better processor, so it's able to shoot at quicker speeds with the electronic frame rate when it comes to your burst shooting modes. And it also does 4K 60 frames per second using the full width of the sensor so you don't really have a crop. Beyond that, the R7 has a built-in log profile when you're recording. And finally, it has a better sync speed at 1 250th of a second with your strobes and a better electronic viewfinder uh, with it just a little bit more resolution so it's a little nicer to look through. Now, with that said, let's take a look at the R10 versus the R7 when it comes to the actual size of the camera. Uh, one thing that I don't really like the, about the R7 is that it is a bigger camera than the R10. It's a deeper camera, and you can kind of see that here. Here's the R10. The R10 is much lighter as well, uh, but it does feel more plasticky. If you're the kind of person that likes to have a camera that is a real in-your-hands type of camera, the R7 is going to be a better choice. But if you need something that's really compact and really light, then I would actually consider maybe the R10. Uh, now, if you're an underwater photographer or an underwater video shooter, the uh, size is not really going to matter all that much. And the reason for that is because both Nauta Cam and Ikelite, who have housings for the R7, they both manage to keep their housings very tight and very small. When it comes to Ikelite, the housing is actually exactly the same between the R10 and the R7. When it comes to Nauta Cam, they only make a housing for the R7, so the R7 is the camera that you're going to consider anyway. Now, if I compare the sizes of the housing, you can see here that they are basically the same size. Um, don't even really notice a difference in the depth, but they're both tiny. They're, uh, when I was shooting the R10, I noticed I was traveling with it and I cut down about uh, seven pounds off my total weight. Um, that's because I was including ports, lenses, camera body, uh, and housing. 
And that is a significant amount to cut down when you're traveling with a big camera setup. I love the fact that the R7 and the R10 are both excellent traveling companions. So I had the opportunity to shoot the R7 underwater over the last couple of weeks. It's been a rough couple of weeks. You might have seen on the news that we've had a lot of rain on the west coast of the United States here. Uh, and it's just been awful dive conditions. I've been trying day after day to get in the water. A lot of the dives I've been having to just get right back out of the water because there's nothing to see, nothing to photograph, or the waves are just too big. Uh, thankfully, I was able to get a few dives in where I got some good macro shots, and I even did one dive with wide angle, uh, and I thought the results turned out phenomenal. Now, don't get confused when you see that I had better image uh, images with the R10 versus the R7. Both can take incredible images. I think the R7 can actually do a better job. It's just that over the last couple of weeks, conditions have been pretty rough. Now, when it comes to actually diving with the camera, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised by the image quality. Uh, now, like I said, the R7 has 32 megapixels on its sensor. I was a little worried when it first came out that that would be too many megapixels for an APS-C sensor, which is already cropped. Uh, the original R10 had 24 megapixels, and I was starting to think that at higher ISOs, it was just a little bit noisy. Now, Canon really did it again by showing that resolution doesn't have to affect low light performance uh, or high ISO performance, and you really don't have to worry about there being more noise uh, at higher ISOs. So I pushed the camera to its limits. I dove in some really dark water. I upped the ISO to 640 or 800, and I didn't see a significant amount of noise, uh, and just a little bit of noise reduction in post helped all of it go away. So I was really surprised with how well the camera performed in low light. And likewise, I think that if you're a macro photographer or you're somebody that really needs to crop in post-processing, then the R7 is gonna be a much better choice than the R10 just because it gives you that leeway without any real degradation in the image quality because it's a higher resolution sensor. Now that's a good segue into autofocus performance. The R7 has better processing capability than the R10, uh, which results in better low light autofocus performance. And I was really pretty stunned. Uh, I shot the whole time using autofocus uh, servo. So that's continuous autofocus for you non-Canon shooters out there. And the, the R7 has autofocus tracking built into every single one of its autofocus area modes. So I just kept it on single autofocus area. I was shooting an autofocus servo and it was able to track all of my subjects with absolute ease, uh, even more so than the R5 I'd say in some respects because the animal eye autofocus tracking is better in the R7 than it even is in the R5. Uh, I think it's even better than it is in the R10. So uh, I was actually shooting some wide angle situations and traditionally I found that autofocus uh, eye tracking works better in macro modes uh, than when you're shooting wide angle. Well, in this case, the R7 was able to really pick up uh, animal eyes and specifically fish eyes in dark water while those fishes were moving with a wide angle lens. So I was super impressed and I can't wait to see further advancements in that, uh, met in that method of autofocus. Now, one thing that really helped me shoot in low light conditions was the built-in in-body image stabilization system. I think that's what really, re really resulted in the deep depth of the camera body versus the R10. Uh, now, is it worth it? I think that if you're a low light shooter, if you're a cold water diver like me, it's definitely worth it um, because it allows you to shoot at lower shutter speeds without getting motion blur from the um, camera shake in your hands. Now, uh, I brought the shutter speed down to about 1 15th and 1 30th of a second when I was shooting wide angle, and I was able to get really crisp shots of wolf eels uh, in dark environments, and I was still able to get the green in the background, and it came out really phenomenally. So, for me personally, yeah, I think I would buy this camera over the R7 uh, for the in-body image stabilization, but if you're you know, a warm water diver, you shoot in tropical conditions, you always have a lot of light uh, when you're diving, you might not really notice the effects of the in-body image stabilization. Um, on the flip side, if you're a videographer, it's very noticeable. Uh, my shots were super smooth um, and it really almost had a gimbal-like quality when I was shooting underwater, which was awesome to see that uh, in my video. So if you're a videographer, again, it's gonna be worth going for the R7 versus the R10. Which brings us into our next segue, which is video shooters. Uh, if you're a video shooter, get the R7. Don't even consider the R10. I just think 
Um, the R7 has some key features that are really necessary if you're a videographer. One, it does 4K60 without a crop. Uh, so that means you'll retain the whole field of view while you're shooting 4K60. And as you all know, uh, when you're shooting underwater video, you really need 60 frames a second so you can slow down your video and stabilize it. Uh, along with that, it has an in-body image stabilization system, which um, helps you stabilize your video. So you've got kind of a two for one deal there where you can shoot 4K60 and you can stabilize it uh, with the IBIS system. Now, beyond that, the camera can shoot 10-bit 422 and it has C-Log, that's Canon's logarithmic profile built in. So if you wanna get into post-processing and you wanna try to get more details in your highlights and your shadows, you're really gonna need C-Log, uh, in which case I would recommend the R7. Now, I'd like to make an update to my R10 review uh, in the fact that the R7 does have uh, better auto wipe or manual white balance capability than previous Canon cameras. It's easier to do in this camera than previous Canon cameras, but in order to do it easily, you actually have to do it in the photo mode, not the video mode when you're doing your manual white balance. And that's a bit annoying. Um, so I didn't really notice that on my R10 because I would just you know, do it in the photo mode and then press the video record button. But when I was shooting in the video mode, I noticed, oh, well, it doesn't actually have the same uh, function when it comes to doing a manual white balance um, in the video mode as it does the photo mode. Now, you can shoot in the photo mode and then just press the record button. Um, and you won't have all the features that you would have when you're in the video mode, but that makes taking a manual white balance easier. I wasn't able to do any manual white balance tests, regrettably, uh, during these dives over the last couple weeks. The main reason for that was there really was not conditions to be able to do that. There was no light, there was no visibility. Um, I barely got some wide angle video shots with a video light. Uh, I really didn't feel like it was good enough conditions to show you guys what this camera can do. But what I know from the R10 uh, is that the manual white balance is a lot better than the R5 even. Um, and it did an excellent job when it came to color renditioning. So uh, I highly recommend it for video shooters. In fact, um, I think the R7 is going to be kind of my top recommendation for video shooters uh, that are looking at a budget option or an APS-C option. Now there's one really cool feature on the R7 that I really want to point out, which is the battery life. Uh, the camera itself is rated to 600 shots. Um, I found that's easily two days of diving. So you really don't have to worry about uh, losing battery during your dive. As long as you charge your batteries every day, you'll be fine. And even if you forget to charge your battery for a day, you'll be fine. So uh, I think that's really awesome. It's been a long, long time, uh, if ever. I don't think I've ever really seen a mirrorless camera that has that sort of battery life. Um, but it's been a long time since I've held a DSLR, which traditionally does. Um, so this is almost DSLR level battery life in a mirrorless camera, and that's pretty rad. And finally, that brings us to who should buy the Canon R7. Well, I'd say if you're on a budget, go for the R10. It's an awesome system. The image quality is great. Uh, it only has slightly less resolution than the R7, but it still has a lot of resolution. Um, I mean, I even shoot with a Nikon Z6, which is a full frame camera, and that has the same resolution as the R10. Uh, now, if image quality isn't the most important thing to you. If you shoot in low light conditions, if you're also a video shooter, you'll wanna consider the R7. Um, and then also if you just have, you know, an extra $500 to spare, uh, the R7 is a great option. Um, now keep in mind, when you're underwater, the housing sizes are gonna be the same between the R7 and the R10, uh, but if you're a land shooter mostly and primarily, it's good to note that the R10 is a little bit lighter, it is a little bit smaller than the R7. Finally, if you want that extra uh, 1 2 50th of a second versus 1 200th of a second for your shutter speed, the R7 is gonna be a better bet. So if you're a sunball shooter and like to shoot uh, directly into highlight situations, you'll probably want the R7 over the R10. All right, now finally, let's talk housing options. Uh, currently, there's only two housing options on the market. There's a Nauticam housing for the R7, which is a anodized aluminum housing, and then there's this polycarbonate Eichlite housing that I was shooting uh, as well. Uh, when it comes to the R10, as I mentioned before, there's only one housing option, which is the Eichlite uh, option, and that comes in a bundle, which is actually super affordable for $24.99. Um, so because the R7 doesn't really have this bundle, it's gonna be a little bit less affordable in that respect. Um, now, 
When it comes to the Nauticam option, uh, what's pretty cool is you can use the WWL1C. That's the, um, that's the compact uh, wet wide angle lens from Nauticam. You can use that with the kit lens, the 14 to 45 millimeter lens uh, that can be shot with the R7. Now that lens doesn't come with the R7, you do have to buy that separate, uh, but it is an awesome option. Now, I was shooting this Eichelite housing here. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is it has back button autofocus, um, so I was pretty stoked to see that. It's got a nice red button if you want to shoot video to press record, uh, and it's really got full functionality of the camera except for the joystick, uh, which is on the back. Now, the joystick was integrated with this interesting little dial here, um, and when it comes to lens options, I tried shooting uh, the 85 millimeter macro. I'll have a review on that later, but honestly, I did not like that lens. Um, and uh, I also shot the 100 millimeter RF macro, which was an awesome lens to shoot. It's definitely the fastest macro lens available on the market. And then for wide angle, I love shooting the Tokina 10 to 17 uh, millimeter fisheye with the Canon EOS R uh, adapter that allows you to adapt an EF to EOS R uh, mount. So I was pretty um, happy with that Tokina setup. I was happy with that on the R10, and I would recommend it for anybody wanting to shoot wide angle going forward with the system. You got this nice little compact dome, and it has a, uh, oops, I put it on upside down, <laughs> but it does have this, uh, uh, this zoom gear right here, so you can zoom in and out right from the dome. So if you have any questions at all, make sure you drop it in the comments below. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome reviews and content about underwater photography and video. And finally, if you wanna get set up with an R7 system, reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com and we'll get you set up. With that, I do hope one day I'll be able to dive with this camera in better conditions. Until then, I'll see you guys out there.